I'm just gonna say get her done. It's so lame. Oh god. It is lame it's actually. So lame. Damn it. Um What if you just like Yeah <laughs> do some like Robert De Niro Robert Hey, is your hus <laughs> Is I... your hus looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> Get her done. Perfect. Yeah. Stay tuned for Burnaflick. Hello, this is Burnaflick. Welcome to Burnaflick. Uh, my name is Eugene, Jonah, Zach. We're here to talk about the writer. Directed by Chloe Zhao. Um, is it offensive? Like what I just did? Like I feel like no. People, I don't know. I feel you know how like when you do. Is it okay to make fun of Southern people? Like well, that? they're not really Southern, are they? Oh, I guess they're, they're Northern. Not, yeah, they're yeah. the the Northern Southern country people. They are country people. Are they country people? Or are they they, are, they cowboys. Cowboys. I think there's a difference. Hmm. You know, we never think about that. There's southern, there's country, there is... There is a difference. There is, yeah. quote, redneck, and then there is cowboy. What's the difference between uh, redneck and country? Well, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, but like, oh well, actually, yeah. that's offensive. What do you mean that's offensive? Redneck? Assume that there isn't a difference. <laughs> With, instead of just agreeing... So just like... <laughs> no, I feel, no, I think that's the opposite. I if you like- assume that they're the same... That'd be offensive. So I think, well, because I think country is what everyone wants to aspire to be. Like, I'm country, but uh, it's like, I think redneck is like, you're just a little bit uh, more trashy than the rest. You think you're country, but you failed at being country, and now you're this other trashy thing. We yeah. might, uh, we okay. might, we might need Maybe to bring in, for movies like this, we should probably bring in a country correspondent. Ah, uh, yes. You do know. we have, who do we know? Uh, Lonnie. <laughs> should we bring in Lonnie? <laughs> the most country person I know would be Galley. Galley? Yeah. At least most country person I'm friends with. Galley's really smart. Yeah, but like he's yeah. still southern. Okay, maybe yeah. he's very he's a southern person. He is a southern He's yeah, very so, he's yeah. very reared into that. So yeah. reared into that. Where's he from? He's from Louisiana. Louisiana. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Texas and Louisiana. Yeah. Galley's like really smart, yeah. One of the smartest dudes I ever met on a on a boat. Like he's a really impressive guy. Um I don't really think of him when I think of country i don't know oh maybe i'm racist <laughs> no it's, maybe, i think of the word country i think of the word redneck i immediately think of like a bumbling fool that's like, well, i mean that's the concept of, of a redneck i think that's the concept of a redneck but i don't think that's the concept of someone who's country no exactly that's yeah. what i'm saying there's the difference you just answered your own question look at that that's we're what learning. i'm saying we're learning we're, however we're becoming better however again something like that is more of a cultural thing anyway right yeah it's Based on, it, you could be in New, upstate New York, the more southern Gary. it becomes. So I Gary. think I think country is almost a state of mind. You know how, uh, what was it, this is hip hop? <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the dancer is like, this is hip hop, and she does her jig. I think that's country. Hmm, who? I actually have no idea what you're talking oh, about. Oh, dude. Yeah. Welcome to hip hop <laughs> dance class with Shelly. Yeah, See the way I'm, I'm walking with one of my arms sorry. lower than the other and my foot dragging? Well, I've that's hip hop. Oh my god. Classics are Leroy Jenkins. Yeah, this is this is up there. If it if it made Bob's Burgers, yeah. If Bob's Burgers has made the character of this lady, then it then it's up there. Okay. Mm. I, I, actually, I guess I just slipped through the cracks and I just never I'm actually not a fan it. of Bob's Burgers. You don't like Bob's Burgers? I like Bob's Burgers. Never liked it. Oh. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe I just need to give it a chance. I haven't seen I, it since the first I season. Do you think it's a very specific brand of humor? Um, yeah. You saying I'm not smart enough to understand the humor? <laughs> no, no. It's like uh, it's like people who like um, uh, uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Like that is a specific kind of humor. I don't. I'm not a big fan of it. But I know a lot of people who are. I never watched it either. Yeah, I know a lot of really cool uh, and like interesting people who swear by Brooklyn Nine Nine, and like I hear that and I'm like, I don't like that show. No, I was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say I I like gritty uh, Western types, but they yeah. tend to be that way usually. 
Like, I don't know about a Western yeah. drama or Western, even Western comedy uh-huh. that isn't a little bit gritty. Like, I guess you could say... Um, it's a Western comedy. Like Three Amigos. Uh, yeah. Three Amigos. I've never seen that. It's an old Steve Martin, Martin Short, and... Okay. Chevy oh. Chase. The Chevy Chase film. Like mm. the, I think the early, early 80s. Something like that. Do you consider this movie a Western? Yeah, definitely. Oh. It's definitely West. Yes, it's more West than Connecticut. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but, that's for uh, sure. Yeah, definitely a Western uh-huh. drama. Okay. Um, weirdly enough, this movie is literally played by... Yeah. Uh, we can go there. We can get there. Yeah. Let's start. You know, let's talk about it. Let's, uh, let's yeah. Um, the, the main character, I believe, Jesse. Jesse Blackburn. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the main character, and... Uh, the movie starts with um, him, uh, and he's uh, he has like bandages on his head. He has like a ma- he had a major accident uh, doing rodeos, um, and uh, he hit his head like bad enough to where like he's like super fucked up, and he's just recovering. And um, yeah, that's how the movie starts, and uh, it starts on a down note, and it kind of doesn't. Stay off that down note. Yeah, it's a mm. seems pretty common in the close out movies I've close out movies I've seen. <laughs> Were you there when we watched? Uh, oh no. no, you told me Nomadland. Matter, you told me that if you want to be depressed, watch no, this movie. Nomadland no. is so sad. It's yeah, good. It, it is. Really good. It is. It, it is sad. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I got France McDormand her third Oscar. Pretty sure or fourth. <laughs> The movie's excellent. Don't get me wrong. It's just really sad. Like the colors are sad. Like they're just sad looking people talking about sad things. And like uh, you're just watching it and you're just like, fuck. Like, all right. (laughs) No, but I don't think this movie is as sad as Nomadland. No, um, no, not even close. Yeah. in my in my head, at least from because my like the main character, um, like he's obviously in a tough situation, um, but like he has a quiet drive to get back into the rodeo life. Like that's the whole point of for the majority of the movie. He's trying to get over his his um uh, injury, and he's trying to get back to it. Um, he along the way he has to figure out money. Because, like, he was the one bringing in the money, and his dad is kind of like a deadbeat dad, gambles, and, like, doesn't make good business decisions. Um, Maybe not deadbeat dad. Yeah, he's an alcoholic. Does that make you a deadbeat? Does that truly make you a deadbeat? He's he's an alcoholic, and he he gambles all their money away. Yeah, but... I Okay, so, like, I understand... What what is your definition of a deadbeat dad? Somebody who's just not there. Oh, but he, he talks about how he taught him everything he knows. He's yeah. there with him. He's you know he's talking to his family like they're his family. Yeah, really. You mean he? They mean something to him, and they well, yeah, and no, he means absolutely. something to them. Yeah. So I wouldn't consider a deadbeat. I would say he what is, is his. I would say he's yeah. he's troubled, right, and has issues. But I wouldn't say deadbeat. I think yeah, um, because the mother passed away, and I'd assume that mm. the dad's probably still going through the woes of that relationship. Yeah. And he's probably yeah. taking it out by gambling and alcohol abuse. Yeah. Debbie yeah. Dad would be like somebody who leaves and then still steals their money, then leaves and comes in and out and does whatever he wants. And like, and even then, maybe yeah. just doesn't treat their kids like they're, they're the main priority, even if they're I adults. Guess that's true. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Okay. Like people are alcoholics. Yeah. Right. And alcoholism truly is an issue, right? It's a disease. Yeah. You wouldn't call somebody with a disease a deadbeat. Yeah, you know but I mean? like it's it's all st- uh, uh, he makes poor decisions like throughout the movie. Um, People make poor decisions doesn't make him a deadbeat. People always make poor decisions. I don't know. It doesn't really seem like he takes care of them. Like he tells Jesse to feed his sister, but like he doesn't feed the sister. Like, well, he was in the beginning. He was trying to give her the food, and then so she doesn't want it. Yeah, and but he's saying, you know, like, hey, don't want to force her to things she doesn't want to do. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, he's like, okay, whatever. He obviously, yeah. Jesse takes it more seriously. Right. I think, he's, I think his name is Brady. Bra- it is Brady. 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 It what? is Brady. Why did I say Jesse? Jesse sounds normal. I remember on the way over normal. here, I was trying to think of all the characters. There actually might be a Jesse. And I'm. The sister's Lily. I know that. It is Lily. Yeah. 
Um, Brady, you're right. It's it Brady. is Brady. Brady, um, Brady Lim. Tim is the dad. Brady, Brady. It's Blackburn. I'm pretty Blackburn. sure their last name is Brady Blackburn. Blackburn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess. Yeah. My definition of uh-huh. deadbeat, and somebody else's, it's subjective, right? You know, so like. Yeah, one, no, he's the dad is definitely present. He's definitely present, but I I don't think he's like entirely emotionally present. Sure. And he uh, he kind of has like an avoidant attitude because like in the beginning, like um. Or like, there was at one point where he was uh, he was talking about going back to the rodeo, and then like uh, the dad was just like, "No, you're not." And then like uh, Brady's like, "I am," and then the dad just kind of like walks away and like, "All right, go kill yourself if you want to." And, like obviously he's upset that he's trying to go back. Yeah, it's a passive aggressive like, way of saying, "Hey, you know what? Yeah, if you want to kill yourself? Do it." But he he's concerned but doesn't know how to be oh no that's near the end of the movie actually yeah yeah okay but he's concerned but he's like right but like not like the type of person to show more emotion about it he just seems like a really defeated guy like really defeated and um i guess just drinking and gambling i I think the way of life that they live too i think is (sighs) there's a lot of pros and cons but i feel like there's Mm -hmm. a lot of struggle Within like the rodeo community, yeah, I I mean the 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 general um like look of like where they live, it doesn't it's not developed. Like they don't live in a developed area, and um it uh, I mean I th- I'm pretty yeah they they live in po- poverty. Like the food they eat, um the state of the house, uh yeah. Um, well, I was thinking about that. And- and it seems like, and they talk about it a lot, and then all they were meant to do is ride horses, right? Mm-hmm. That's in itself another culture, just like a lot of cultures are based on minimalism. Yeah. And even if it's the state of what they live in, it could be you know, seen as impoverished, which it probably is. Yeah. They may not care that much. Yeah, no, no. There's, more there's, simplistic. There's, a, there's no sense of, uh, um, of, there's no like, deep sense of lack or longing in these characters they're right. they're they're living their lives uh um uh matter of factly yeah yeah there this so, is this like hey this is what i like to do it yeah. doesn't not much money in it but this is what i want and but yeah but i i do think it is important to notice that there isn't much money in it the fact that he has to like uh like go work at the grocery store mm-hmm. um and uh so I do really like I I it's it's such a vibe to watch him at the grocery store and like people come up to him and be like oh you're that guy who's like the famous uh a rodeo rider and like you're you're so well known and like it's so nice to meet you and then and then they always follow up with like oh you're working here now and then the way he responds it's like he he maintains his dignity and yeah. um but it's so but the the movie's showing us that scene for a reason, and like it, uh, it's like a grounded kind of sadness a bit, um, and like the way those scenes are lit, like it's like the harsh, almost green like grocery store fluorescent fluorescent lighting, and it's mm-hmm. it's like a, it's a depressing uh, shot. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I was reading a little art, small article of, about the movie from L.A. Times. Uh-huh. Talked about how Chloe Chloe Zhao uh, she purposely made it to where the scenes fit or the emotion that they're feeling. Yeah. So they had a principal script, you know, like a standard script, but they didn't really uh-huh. go with it. Okay. They pretty much found the scenes in which that would in- influence their emotions. Yeah. The most. And work from there. I think that makes sense because most of these actors are not, they're not professional actors. No, and it's yeah. very, it's very obvious, of course. Yeah. That's when, when I was watching, I was like, ooh, <laughs> yeah, what's going on here? And then I, that's why I looked into it. I'm like, oh, they're, yeah. they weren't really going with the script here. No, they yeah. were, they were real people. Yeah. Um, Chloe, well, Chloe Zhao, she f- um, met, um, what's his name? Brady. Brady. Um, at a rodeo. That was the first time they met. At and, a rodeo, okay. Yeah, was this before his accident or? Uh, I believe so. It was okay. either that or 
like soon after the accident. Yeah. But I think the movie initially movie wasn't came. supposed to be so much about like disabilities in oh, the rodeo. Okay. I think it was just supposed to be like it's about it was about about the hearts just being broken. Yeah. But I think over over the time, like he said, the script started changing and mm-hmm. the disabilities kind of took the forefront. Yeah. I I don't think the acting is I don't think the acting is bad. Well, I think he well, did a good job. Yeah. Uh, I think he did the best. Um I think uh some of the side characters, like the ones that you just kind of see for like one scene or two scenes, I think some of them are just kind of awkward. Um but overall, I think most yeah, I I uh it just seemed very real to me. Um and uh I just want to talk about the the little sister for a second cuz like she uh i liked her i liked her a lot and like i don't think i've ever seen um like autism being portrayed uh it's because it's not like they make her into like a sad tragic character she's like a happy girl yeah she's just a character yeah but and like um it's i don't know i just really uh because her autism is so obvious um and I, I guess I was trying to figure out like what the film was trying to do by including uh, like an autistic pers- person in there, and um, and then when the movie ended, and I saw that's I saw that she's the actual sister. Yeah, <laughs> see, she's the actual sister of the actual guy, <laughs> and uh, that's that's why. She, okay, um, I, I was so like when I was looking at the ca- the uh, cast. Yeah, I saw names. Like, wait a second. Yeah. Wait a second. <laughs> they're how did they get this? Like obviously, they're it's a they're, they're them. <laughs> they are doing. They are essentially loosely reenacting their life. Yeah. yeah, and that's really cool. Yeah, that's another. That's another thing that you don't really see often. No, outside think, of a documentary or something. Yeah. I think it made it really comfortable for Lily to just kind of do her own thing too. I agree. Yeah, you got some real like like real shots of her. Yeah. A lot of it's it super candid. Yeah. Like like these things I'm gonna feel like no, they as a matter of fact, I was thinking about this. When you see a movie, let's say if you were to take real life yeah. conversations, right, that people have every day at work or something, mm-hmm. and then you took a nice film camera and edited it and made it look like a, a movie. Yeah. And then you're yeah. thinking like this could be real because these guys are really wow, they're really good actors. Like, no, just yeah. because it's the it's, it's the what frame. They really it's what they say. Yeah. It's what they really say, and then it just looks like a movie. So yeah. immediately, you, your brain starts being like, "Oh, this is just a movie." Mm-hmm. But in reality, that's exactly what I see here. Yeah, yeah. This is they're having essentially real drama, dra- dramatized or dramatized conversations. Yeah, right for the film, right? But it's still coming from the heart, from the real emotions. Yeah, like, and that what is what hooked me, kept me away from the bad acting. Mm-hmm. And the iffy dialogue. Yeah. But once I realized what they're trying to do, I was like, oh, okay, I am, mm. I'm in this. I like I, this. Part, part of uh, like what you just described, I felt really strongly during like the campfire scene. Yes. When like a bunch of his friends, they're just like hanging out at the campfire and they're just uh, shooting the shit. And then- um, Talking about their friend. Yeah. Talking about- um, I forget his name. Lane. Lane. Lane was like another rodeo guy. He was like a super charismatic, everybody liked him kind of guy. And uh and he got into a major accident and um he's like completely disabled now. Um but yeah, they're talking about Lane and um and then like they uh, that one dude is just like, "Hey, let me say a prayer for him." And then like they he starts and it just feels really like you said, it's just like a camera dropped into a conversation. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. And when you when you think about like that kind of scene, like if if I were if I were a Hollywood like Disney executive and like I saw this movie, I'd be like, why is this scene in here? This this is not interesting. <laughs> but like I yeah, it's um obviously it's not a Disney movie. It's not like a it's an indie movie. It wasn't yeah. funded by like big executives. Eighty thousand dollar film. Really? Yeah. I looked it up Holy shit. AK. It, I wonder. No, the film looks great, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, th- you know what, you know what, really stuck with me the most. Yeah, like what really got me feeling something the most. Yeah, was when he started riding the horse he had just broken. Oh yeah, for the first time, so, picking that, up a speed. Yeah, and I was like, 
that I, f- I feel like I'm feeling what he thinks. Yeah. That's, that was the most powerful scene for the whole movie for me. Mm. Maybe, I, it may I not know, be for you, about. Yeah. but that one, I was like, yeah, because it's the guy who finally, like, he's picking up the pace. Yeah. He's picking up where he left off for as much as he can, mm-hmm. and then he's just freeing himself from what's been holding him back for yeah. so long. There's, there's so many emotions that uh, don't need to be said, and it's, they, they just, it just plays out. And um, it, it's, it, it makes it hit harder, you know? That's, yeah. that's another thing that when I was talking about the dialogue stuff I was looking into yesterday, yeah. another thing they mentioned was if the dialogue, um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just, ha- it just has to fit the area the mm-hmm. person and like, and the emotion of the scene. Yeah. If it's not like, it doesn't have to be witty dialogue like my dinner with Andre, or like right? Quentin Tarantino. Or Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. No, it doesn't have to. It just has to fit the emotion that is supposed to be shown. Yeah. So if it's candid and it's based on real stuff too, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what they say. It's just what you feel as the as the as the viewer. Yeah. And if it works for you, then that's when it again started clicking for me. Like, okay, mm-hmm. I can get away from my critiquing because that's not what they're trying to do they're not they're not there for you to critique yeah like a lot of movies are i also think like culturally in different regions in the states people talk differently because like if you're if you're filming in new england like a bunch of new england cowboys they probably sound different they're gonna sound (laughs) different they're gonna probably talk faster they're gonna be yeah just you know trying to get a lobster roll cowboy (laughs) Come on, cowboy. Hey, oh, wait, hey, you don't know me. You don't know my family. <laughs> hey, don't make me lasso you and hog tie you and beat you in front of your kids. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. <laughs> Something that a drunk Bostonian would say. I, <laughs> I they, don't know. It's just a bunch of canes talking <laughs> yeah. to each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every single, it's like the, the joke about in Family Guy about all Russians are bears on unicycles. <laughs> all Bostonians just look like cane. <laughs> exactly the same, but different clothes. Yeah. Um, Going back to like a scene that really hit hit you, a scene that really hit me was uh, the scene where he's breaking in that dude's horse, and um, that's like a kind of a long sequence. I think it's one of the longest sequences. Uh, yeah. uh when I'm not interrupting, I swear oh, that's yeah. that's where I was thinking actually the the oh. candid camera thing. Yeah, yeah, because the guy that owns the horse, who's like who's hiring Brady to break it in, like he's like interjecting like words. He's like. He's never been broken before, and or like, wow, it's like a or proud like, grandmother. Yeah, yeah. Wow, and, and like it, that feels so real. Like, um, wow. and he, and he's probably <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's visceral. He, yeah. The, I'm the first time I watch. I watched this underway, by the way. Um, the first time I watched this, like, I realized he's breaking this horse in on screen, real time, like real time. Mm-hmm. Like this is how he would do it, really. And I that really like drew me in. Um, yeah, uh, I, I I don't think the horse was acting. I think the horse was actually pissed off. Yeah, um, Buck and Bronco. I just, yeah, I thought that was really cool. I mean, anytime on screen when you like show competency or show like someone who's really good at their job, like that's you well, don't maybe, need to be. That's good enough. Maybe the horse was a method actor. Maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the real Oscar goes to <laughs> goes to horse number five <laughs> playing what was the name of the horses oh speaking of horses yeah the whole movie there you go uh, anyway the yeah. um when he had to sell his family horse like yeah. f- selling that's where like one other thing where, like I felt like his father was kind of like just a, a douche mm. right because you know, he says like like we can't sell him. He's not a pet. He's like a family member. We've yeah. It's like hey, now it's his turn to provide for the family. Yeah. And I was like, damn, I don't know. I could never do that. I let alone stand there and watch it what go away. I couldn't be the one to do that. Mm. I could never do that to a family member, right? Yeah. I was thinking like, wow. I mean, we do that to horses. We do that to animals. And we used to do that to people. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like. Damn, can you imagine, like, if you really assumed, like, a horse as a family member, you could never do that. Mm, yeah. No matter how harsh it can be, right? <clears throat> I think, well, I like, the dad, I think the dad is more... And if the dad wasn't, like, spending all the money, 
You know how like he pretty much like attacked, like like shoved his dad. Yeah. What the f- like? We would have more money if you weren't drinking Bra- and Brady, gambling. Brady is he's he's a he's a more sensitive guy, I think, than his dad. I think his dad bottles things up, and uh, and um, is really good at like controlling his emotions, um, which is you know which is not always a good thing. Um, and but Brady Brady like really feels his emo- and like uh, the thing with. Um, uh, selling his horse, uh, Gus. Gus was the horse's name. Mm-hmm. That kind of uh, I didn't realize this till I watched the second time around. That kind of like foreshadows um, his inability to put down Apollo mm-hmm. um, because he feels so. He knows he has to, right? Which is why he asked his dad to do it for him. Um, but yeah, that was a uh, he. He could not put him down. Another thing about that was another reason why he didn't want to do that i feel is because he saw this horse as himself yeah you're right he saw the horse as like yeah. why do i get to live if i'm broken but you get to die yeah he does say that right he says it to his sister like i'm i get to live because i'm a person yeah and but also at the same point it is definitely foreshadowing at the same time yeah you know like you see connection i had to get rid of my horse to live myself even more yeah, i feel like this movie it just says so much and but but also saying so little like it's it it, it's i was <laughs> yeah brady is very emotionally dense this movie did you tell that brady is shoals what no what shoals looks like brady <laughs> wait you gotta look at him it's shoals oh wait yeah he has the same he face have curly hair though but he has the same facial structure yeah, you're right okay. and like the <laughs> <laughs> our boy shoals he's like the most depressing person on the boat <laughs> It was like everything he would say would be like about like yo to fucking kill myself. <laughs> if we're here another day. I'm gonna fucking kill myself. <laughs> oh, what did he say? What did he say? I, I was I'm trying to think of. He said some crazy shit. Like he said, like, oh, I hope the Russians find us and blow us up because I want to fucking kill myself. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I was thinking, wow, man, this guy's so depressed. Like that's Shoals. The yeah. same face. The what I like about him is either he's he's really good at acting, yeah, or his emotions are always in that state of like, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> like because obviously he's going through shit. And then yeah, this movie was filmed while he was healing. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he, this is a year, yeah. like nine months after mm-hmm. his accident, mm-hmm. right? Because like you said, it wasn't supposed to. Like you said, actually, it wasn't supposed to, you know, be this way. It was supposed to just be talking about like. You know the life of badass rodeo, basically, yeah. or like I think it was like the lifestyle of, um, just like the rodeo family, mm. and then it just turned into disability central. Yeah. <laughs> um, I uh, <laughs> another scene central. that that really uh, I guess is stuck with me, um, especially after like uh, like watching a. Uh, the first time around, watching a second time around, the scenes where he's with Lane, um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's he is like he loves Lane, right? And um, he he's like Lane's like a brother to him, and uh, but he also like you said with um, with Apollo, he also kind of sees Lane as a cautionary tale almost I think I don't not a lot is said but like this is all stuff that I'm thinking about like while I'm watching the scene um I don't really know if it's true but I I kind of get the sense that um uh he part of the reason like why uh maybe he sees Lane so often is is that like he kind of sees like this could be me and like if I were in this situation, like I would want someone to come and visit me all the time as well. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, it's just um, it's very it's it's hard for me to pinpoint uh, what um, what lesson to take from. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Uh, I don't know. What, how'd you guys? I, I think there's a lot of cautionary tales with. I mean, Lane's definitely I think yeah. the most prominent. But I mean, throughout the movie. There's more than just Lane. There's the um, 
the owner of the horse that he was breaking that kept, you know, telling him, Oh, you're doing such a great job. Holy crap, no one's ever yeah. done this before. He but he was missing a hand. Oh yeah, he was missing a hand. I didn't even notice that. about that. Yeah. I didn't even notice that. He had a hook. Um Yeah. The obviously the dad was suffering from uh mental problems yeah. and possibly something Probably else. Probably depressed. Because, yeah. And I'm well, I think he also used to ro- ride. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he he said his mother and father taught him everything they know. A bit also about just oh, training break, horses. Training. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that could be different than, you know, the rodeo thing. The rodeo thing could just be his own thing, you know, the people he rolled in with and the mm-hmm. life. Because again, it's probably, it may not be the culture completely in South Dakota, or maybe it is. I mean, South Dakota, what, Wisconsin, yeah. like places like, uh, or uh, Wyoming, mm. no, like are usually like big rancher states. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like that's that's a big part of their everyday life there for the for for a good amount. Especially places like that are low population states. Yeah, yeah. and so they know each other, um, and that's how they get around. That's how they commune with each other, mm-hmm. and that's the lifestyle they live. Um, I forgot what I was getting getting there with this. I forgot my point. <laughs> um, Never forget your point. I know, I know. Yeah, rookie no, mistake. Cut that out. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> yeah. When I look at him mm-hmm. and I'm thinking, yeah, no, he's like a natural at acting. Even if yeah. it's, he, he's a natural at it. I think so, yeah. And, um, you know, he's talking about, I was, I'm, cowboys are born to ride. Mm-hmm. He, he says that, I don't know if he's, I think he says that to himself. Or, no, he says that to the, to the horse? Uh, bu- 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 I, or says it's the lane? I, I, no, I don't think he says it's lane. Um, he does say it. He says he, he says does. it. He says, oh. like, oh, yeah, it's like, well, God, oh, yeah, he puts it to the horse. Like, God put you, put everyone here for a reason, mm-hmm. and a cowboy's reason on this planet is to ride. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. And I believe he was saying that to the horse. Mm. Um, but I can't remember. I saw it last night, so... There's just so much earnestness with these characters and like with the movie. Um the movie's not cynical, uh and um it's the movie it's I don't know. There's like this really weird like uh um like hope that's kinda in the movie and maybe the soundtrack kinda helps with that. The the soundtrack is there's like a very um uh like orchestral, like quiet uh, soundtrack that kinda swells with um like emotionally. But like uh uh I'll, I'll pause and take it? Nah. I will I'll call him back in like a little bit. Whatever. Johnny. When you I live with Johnny, but Yeah, I know. Thanks. <laughs> I <didn't> know <laughs> the um when you say Yeah uh Cynical, not cynical. Uh huh. I mean, there are some parts of it. I'd say the, yeah. the scene where he's giving Lane's shirt to the kid mm-hmm. and asks me still wrestles, and he does that because I think because he wants to feel mad. he's mad. And he wants yeah. to also feel strong. Yeah, and that's pretty cynical. I don't think that's cynical. I think that's uh, that's um, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't think that's cynical. I think that that's just a uh, Brady having like these emotions. And he doesn't know what to do with. He's him. not a perfect guy, right? Uh, yeah. And and he wants to. And he's there is an anger there. Yeah. Like um, because isn't he's he's giving away his stuff, right? He's all. No. I think it's all part of. He's giving out away stuff that belongs to somebody who's very close to him. Yeah. He's very close too. I think it's because he. I mean, he knows he sees somebody young who wants to do this. Yeah. Somebody relatively new to it, and then like, hey, he knows. I think at that point he knows it's over for him. Mm. At that point, he knows it's it's done, and that's a cynical thought. Like, hey, it's over for me. He he's come to terms with it. Maybe not cynical. Yeah. It's more of a very very gradual coming to terms with his reality. Yeah, yeah. Um, I um I really think that's such a mature take. Um, because like I think your typical um like uh. I don't know Hollywood movie would be like uh, he overcomes his uh, injury and he get gets back into rodeo riding and uh, he's he's better than ever. Um, but uh, no, um, yeah. while while a real thing, it's not very common. I think yeah. I think you're describing a Kevin Costner movie. Oh, okay. Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you don't sell this field, you're gonna go bankrupt. No, I'm gonna play baseball with ghosts. <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, didn't Kevin? Co- he has a 
Western movie. That he has a few Western has, came out. He has plenty no, it just of came out. Yeah. Well, it, I don't think uh, it came out yet. Oh, has it's, it? it's about to come out. I've heard about it. I heard it's just that Yellowstone, it's supposed but supposed to be a trilogy or something. Oh no, God. that's what I heard. Yeah, it's funny. Kevin Cosner, like, isn't he like notoriously bad to work with? I have no idea. I'm pretty uh, sure. I think so. Like Waterworld was like the reason why Waterworld went like three times as budget because of him or something. Oh, is that what happened with Waterworld? And then they were also doing it like in like <laughs> the like Indian Ocean or something like that, and the monsoons and shit destroying sets, just like in Apocalypse Now. I didn't know any of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I watched Waterworld in my sixth grade biology class. <laughs> yeah, Waterworld is just Mad Max, but in water. Yeah. Uh, I re- actually watched the I first. I probably movie. rewatch it. Yeah. Waterworld. Yeah, it's pretty good. I feel like it's referenced a lot, and like I, I have, I have the 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 cred to say that like I watched it, but I also have no memory of it. So yeah, maybe I should watch it again. I wouldn't remake that movie like Mad Max has done. You wouldn't? No. Why not? Is it? I wouldn't say it's. No, it's not bad. Okay. No, it's not. It's not bad. It's just. Uh, oh, it doesn't need a remake. No. Okay. Not like, and also not but, so good that it doesn't need a remake. Okay. I think you could like take that sequel. same premise. It could honestly a sequel would sequel. probably be the best. Yeah, a sequel would probably be, like sure. obviously don't call it Water World. <laughs> yes. Wa- water. That's such a water planet. No. <laughs> no. It, you could say something like Aqua Velva. A- Aqua Terra. <laughs> Aqua Terra. No, yeah. so, no, anything movie relating with the word water in it just sounds generic and water. stupid. I mean, the word water world also sounds stupid. It just sounds like a liquid earth. Liquid. <laughs> <laughs> the ice. Two, water world 2, the ice age. Oh something. my God. <laughs> I mean, that might actually work. Yeah. But if your brain's shut completely off and out the window yeah. somewhere, water, the, water world to found land. <laughs> oh my god! Water war, water war, water war. That's actually pretty. Sick. Water war, water war. That's a say that five times. Water fast. war, water water. Yeah. Yeah. Water bottle. Water. <laughs> water bottle. Water b- <laughs> god. <laughs> would 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 Kevin Costner like? Would he like make a cameo as like a as the old? Like from from his movie, or like, would he be the main character? He uh, he'd probably have to be the main character if you're oh. gonna cast him. Oh, does he have an ego? Yeah. Oh, I, okay. I, I, yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. He 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 like for yeah. I forgot what movie he did. Apparently, this is what I what I read or not. Yeah. What I watched in a video. Sorry, I read in comments people talking more about it. Um, is that he for an entire movie? He his co star. He only talked to him during scenes. And never. Never hung out. They just they played. They were on the movie set for so long. Yeah, he he just started despising his like <laughs> either his director or or his, uh, his editor or somebody like that. Or oh. his, it might have been uh, what was it three thousand miles from Graceland because uh, like him and Kurt Russell were both uh, not both buddies. It, it wasn't that one. That movie was not not it. No, it wasn't. That movie. I, I thought it was entertaining. I like Kurt Russell, mm. but <laughs> it's one of those like slapstick, fucking crazy high octane movies where like the oh. editing is like like uh. <laughs> basically a bunch of elvis impersonators oh going to rob, rob a casino, a casino. Rob a casino oh. and they're all during an elvis convention oh yeah i feel like that's, <laughs> that's, that's I, that it. i feel like that's one of those ideas where you talk about with your friends and then some one of your friends is like yo that's a movie. Well, the entire time, <laughs> Kevin Costner and Kurt Russell were basically fighting for screen time. Oh, okay. Mm. Makes sense. Yeah, but like, he, like, apparently Kevin Costner is just known to be like, he just takes control of everything. Like this movie yeah. is produced by him and I don't think he's directing it. When What's the new one? of it? Something long about about the mountains and whatever. Oh, he's some... going to play another probably disgruntled Western Frontier man, okay, just yep. like every other, Sheriff. probably, yeah, or like the show, the what's it called, Yellowstone. Yellowstone. I'm like thinking, isn't this? I heard Yellowstone's good. I won't watch it. And then he got well, fired, though. Why not? I don't like Kevin Costner. Oh, okay, all right, <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, J- yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal, Kevin Gyllenhaal. Costner. We won't. We will stop 
this podcast in the f- forever once he he's able to do all ten fingers from the actors he dislikes. I like Open Range. That's probably the one Kevin Costner movie I do like. Mm. Well, I I actually like Field of Dreams, mm. regardless of how like cheesy it is. That was the first Kevin Costner movie I've seen. Field of Dreams. I watched it with my dad. I liked it. I like um, John Mulaney's monologue for the Oscars about about it. It was funny. It was long. It was like um, three minutes long. Oh, just John like Mulaney was at the Oscars. Yeah, he was he, he the host? No, no, he he. Oh, he presenter. He pre- presenter. He, pre- he presenter, and he talked about. Okay. He he just went on about Field of Dreams for like three minutes. It was funny. Oh. He's a funny guy. He is. Hmm. He's but a, uh, but this movie's not Field of Dreams. No, no, it's not. This it's is not, not Field of Dreams. This is Field of of Dreams Gone. Field of letting go of your dreams. His this movie is are the ghosts. The ghosts of, of your field, dreams. Of your field of dreams. Yeah. And like, well, I, at the very end, he, uh, Lane tells him, don't give up on your dreams. Um, and, uh, but I don't know. It's like, uh, I, he is giving up on his dream to be a rodeo rider. But the way that the movie kind of goes about it, it portrays that there is a sadness to that, Mm -hmm. but there is also a growth to that. Like his decision to give up is he is progressing. Yeah. Um, the, the movie kind of has that vibe, um, which I think is really mature vibe. He's the Phoenix rising from the ashes. (laughs) Yes, 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 Bane. Uh, (laughs) The Oof. fire rises. The fi- <laughs> yes, brother. The <laughs> fire rises. <laughs> it's did, funny. We, did we start the it's, fire? It's funny because like you can do that voice without like, but like we, you immediately think like, I do yeah. that because of the movie <laughs> We're the Millers. Oh, okay. When Jason Day is like, that movie is not a good movie. It's not, but he does he does a Bane impression. Yeah. It's funny, and that's why. Oh. <laughs> Oh no, drugs in here! You have nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was kind of funny. The movie has some funny parts, um, I but will overall say, wasn't I, good. It's probably the the yeah. What's his face? The the oh, what's his face? Eyebrows. Oh, yeah. Eyebrows. Um, that's like a very iconic eyebrows movie for that guy because mm-hmm. like he is very eyebrowsy in that. He's such a good actor though. He is really good. He's so I I didn't realize how good he was till I saw him in the bear. Yeah. Yeah. The bear. Is the, the bear now? He was in season. Well, he was. Um, Have you seen the bear? He was a bit part. I saw. Two. I think halfway through season one, and then I couldn't do it because uh, oh. it produces way too much anxiety for me. Because nah, you got all they do is. Oh, then you won't like season two, man. The the, the dinner scene, mm, that the the, yeah. the flashback dinner scene, that whole episode is the epitome of anxiety. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It's the epitome of like Jesus, I. I'm getting like I think, overwhelmed. I think you should power through. Should. Ciara I and I, after every episode, we're just like, have a have a beer. I think and just watch it. I think you should power through because, um, uh, I mean, the characters they grow. Um, I Sydney's one of my favorite characters. Um, because uh, she's kind of like the uh, she's like the normal person coming into this fucked up situation and like learning how to cope. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't. Yeah. I, I'm so dumb. I didn't realize cousin was um, what's his name from Daredevil. Code Daredevil. The show Daredevil. Uh, Sorry, I went Punisher. The Punisher. I've never seen Punisher. Oh, you seen the Punisher? Yeah. Which one? He was. Um. He was. Uh. Oh my God. The Code. He was the he was the attacker guy who faked his death. Hmm. Who was like utilize using. Uh, the Punisher. He's really good. Yeah, that I forget his name, but he's he's, a, he's really a, good. He's got a strange name. He's gonna be uh, Ben Grimm in Fantastic Four. Yeah, I don't know who the thing. He's gonna be the thing. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Him and Pedro Pascal. How many fantastic? There's like four this'll fantastic. This will be, this, be the fourth one. This will be fourth the fantastic one. third one. <laughs> fantastic fourth okay. one. Sorry. Uh, do we count one, Silver Surfer? Are we counting silver? No, no, we don't count the uh, Miles Teller one. Oh, I thought we are counting that one. Actually, I don't want to count that one. Okay. If you do, then count this that is the one, third one. Is the fourth. It's, but if you don't count it, it's, it's the, the third. The third. Okay. It's yeah. fantastic. Say that again. 
<laughs> was, Ooh, I can't you, believe yeah. I cannot believe the guy's like yeah that's oh what my <laughs> god that's that's so what are we some kind of suicide squad <laughs> 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 it's oh, you said it. You said, said the name. Oh my god! Um, I never finished Suicide Squad. The which one? The first one? Oh, the second? first one. The first one. Oh, who cares? I never, I never finished it. It doesn't matter. The second one's great. The second one's good. Yeah, I mean it's oh. a lot better than the first one. I guess it, it was. It was a flop. Low bar. It, it was a flop, but no, it's no, it's good. Okay, hmm. telling you. There was something else I wanted to say. I forgot. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Trust. Oh yeah, that guy. That guy's in. Uh, what's that Star Wars show? Acolyte? No. Oh, um, Andor. Yeah. He is in Andor. He's in Andor. Yeah. Yeah. He gets blown away. Oh yeah. By Andor. Yeah. Wait, what, Andor, he's so one of the rebels. He's one of the rebels. No, I know. Part, part of the what movie? You're, what what, yeah. what was he getting blown away in? He fucking shot him with the blaster with the AK forty seven blaster. Oh, was it? No, no. He shot him with the regular blaster. I don't remember. He shot him with a blaster. Sorry, I know. I know you're talking about Andor. We're talking about Andor. Oh, where'd this come from? Is what I'm asking. The guy in Bear. Oh, okay. Cousin. Sorry. There we go. Yeah. Gotcha. Anyway, bear guy. we got there. The bear guy. The bear. Guy. <laughs> the bear <laughs> Some, geez. Somehow uh, the bear guy returned. The point. The point is, uh, finish the bear. Yeah. Yeah. That's your LDI. <laughs> it's your LDI. I can say that you're still in the Navy. Uh, get him. Got him. <laughs> Buh. Buh. <laughs> Bear. I mean, season three is also like next week. I don't think they need a season three. Like, why? Do, why do they need a season three for the for the Emmys? Be- because it's oh yeah for the Emmys. Because I mean, I'll watch it obviously. because the show that like is really good and people can't get enough of it. Mm. That's why for the money. <laughs> See, it's like mu- like albums and music, right? There's yeah. Something called the sophomore album. Yes, you know? sophomore slump. Yeah, like well, but Bear season two is great though. No, no, sophomore album is supposed to be the best album. Oh. In music, your sophomore album is what makes or breaks you, right? There's a lot of people say, okay, if you your second album is not a hit, then your first album could be a hit and be like, yeah, it's they're great, but are they consistent? Yeah, second album to show consistency, oh, to maintain the base. Okay, was and he then, one of wonder or was yeah, he right? And there's plenty of times where somebody makes one really album deal? and they're like, yeah, yeah, it's popular for a bit, and and you, you know, after that, you're not like, I'm not looking for this person anymore. Mm. Every once in a while, I listen to this song again because yeah, I haven't heard it in a long time. It's pretty good. Anyway, like a like a show, I'd say in the same way. It's like second seasons have to come stronger. Yeah, just I mean, the first season's strong. Second season has to be really strong. Mm. And then from there, you'd be like, oh, now I'm just watching it. In because. my experience, I feel like second seasons or sequels, they're usually weaker. Than the first movie, or they usually take on a different, uh, um, take on like slightly different flavors to like, I guess, like be different. Um, different flavors, the bear. Yeah, but no, I I think the, the bear season two is great. I think it's a very natural progression. Um, I think season two is warranted. It, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know about I don't I don't know if they need a season three, but all right, cool. You'll be <clears throat> you'll regret that what you said when you see the third season. Why? I don't know, but I'm sure it's gonna be really good. Oh, I thought you were trying to say it was gonna be bad. No, I'm saying you'll you'll be like, oh, sorry, you'll be regret saying you don't you don't need it in the third season. The third everyone season. gets superpowers. <laughs> 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 they gotta save Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay, yeah. back to the movie. I was wondering, like, I wonder uh-huh. after it's seen, since everything's pretty much like almost real mm. in this movie. I wonder if they actually killed the horse. I'm like, did they actually show just a mangled horse leg and, uh, and he actually had to kill him? I'm sure the makeup department had. had I'm sure too, but like, yeah. I'm like, maybe they're like we can't show. Oh, did you did you wait for the credits to like no horses were harmed in the? No, no, I didn't. But like, I was like, what if? What if? I don't think no. There's no way. I think that would have been a really big publicity thing with PETA and everything else. Yeah. I think people would get involved and. No, it wouldn't because it's not an inhumane thing to do. I mean, for oh, for movies, it's I, like the most humane we, thing you can we, do. We killed this horse for the movie, unless <laughs> no, like, unless it, like it, the it, horse actually got caught up in that's the barbed wire, and like yeah. they're like, oh man, okay, film this real quick. <laughs> can I can I film you being really upset a little bit more? <laughs> yeah, I guess we need more tears. <laughs> His uh, crying scene was actually very good. Yeah, 
I wonder if he was just like, what if <laughs> she's such a good director? She's like, starts telling like, hey, <laughs> your best friend is paralyzed. You can't do the thing you love anymore. Your sister is autism and your dad's an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> and your mom's dead. <laughs> yeah. And your best friend, you sold him. Like your 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 horse, he's gone. Uh, I mean, uh, saying it out loud, I'm like fuck, stacks. <laughs> of course, no, again, no issue having an autistic sister and like yeah. that. Uh, and like, well, the movie doesn't feel bad for him. Yeah, it's what I'm saying. I just want to. Yeah, the, it's at no point like it's it is yeah. That aspect has nothing to do with- There's a lot of respect being given to each of the characters, mm -hmm. uh, which I like. Um, no one's being milked for fucking. Like, even Lane, I think in a lesser director's hands, like, you would milk Lane more, and it'd be obvious that you're milking the Lane-ness of it. But- There's, there's not really any substance where, there, though, for a character to develop when the character can't, so, can't communicate. Yeah. I, 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 um- uh, about Lane, like, um, I don't know, like, what, like, it just seemed like he was really, like, expressive with, mm -hmm. like, his eyes and, like, um, like, near the end, especially, uh, say, whoa, ooh, <laughs> no, no, well, what I'm specifically thinking of is, like, near the end, where, like, Brady is, there's, like, a quiet moment when they're together, and, like, Brady... This is, like, after Brady, like, gave up on... And, like, uh... And then Lane's kind of looking at him, but, like... I don't know. It's just really... He's looking at him in a way that, like, you know there's concern in his eyes. And, um... I... I just thought that was so interesting, because, like, you never... He... The guy's actually disabled. Like, that's... Yeah. I found that so interesting and so, uh... Like, um... How did, how did you got that performance out of a disabled dude like that's i w i will say yeah. uh the part where he has his head down and keeps saying hey look at me he's trying to get him to look at him yeah because you know he's he's feeling down yeah they're talking about you know a scene a scene or two before they're talking about you know all his buddies like hey remember that thing they did yeah showing him videos of like hey this is you yeah yeah, and yeah. he was really happy for a second but then you know he's put into his head like yeah. i'm here now i can't do this anymore and that could be hard for somebody in that position to mm -hmm. see and and also has nothing to do but mm -hmm. think, right? And you see him down there. And he's tr and and yeah. And Brady's trying to get him. Like, no, man. Hey, hey, hey. Like, you're my brother, you know. And then at the last part, mm -hmm. where he's, you know, riding with him. Hey, pull left, pull right. Yeah, and yeah. I'll stop him. And then he's, um, uh, what's his name? Brady is. He's really hooked in onto the, you know, the whole, yes. you know, riding thing. And you see Lane look up. And just smile. Yeah, he's he yeah. he's looking up to this person, uh -huh. right? Somebody who kind of understands what he's going through. Like the only person, yes. yeah. the only person of anybody in the movie who can actually understand even a little bit of what Lane is going through, mm -hmm. and realizes this guy's here for him, and he shouldn't feel like yeah, as bad. Dude, like that. The juxtaposition between when you first see him, uh -huh. which he was fine, but still feeling down, and when you finally see him. The growth, just like uh, Brady feels over over the time, yeah. his growth and his development, and how he comes to terms with his reality. I saw this in the rack, and uh, <laughs> I um, made me cry a little bit because, <laughs> like, especially in that last scene, um, there's that emotional music going on, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I I think that and unemployment movie, really really hits har harder. Yeah, I'm like, what am I doing here? I'm I am also disabled. I've watched in like four hours. <laughs> First wake up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in Twenty One Man, right? Yeah. Hey, right. You, yeah. You could just create like a little little lever system to move things. <laughs> <laughs> it hits it wrong. It hits a, a shutdown switch. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um. I I uh, I think we're done. Uh, oh, I yeah. don't know. Well, uh, well, I, let me ask you guys this. Um, uh, I know when I first uh, like um, brought this movie up, I didn't say who's directed by because I feel like these days Chloe Zhao has like a really bad rap because of Eternals. I liked Eternals. Um, what I, I liked it. I I don't Pause. think. I liked it. Really? Hmm. I'm not afraid to say that. <laughs> no, I respect it. I think I, I know I respect it too. I liked I mean. Eternals. <laughs> I now I have to ask. Oh, actually, yeah. 
you should finish what you're saying. Oh, I didn't like Eternals. No, no, no. But no. I don't think Eternals was so bad. I don't think it was so bad, but I also didn't like it. Well, you're saying she's a bad rep, and because of that, and what? oh yeah, yeah. So like, um, yeah, I, I, um, uh, did you guys like uh, expect this from her, or expect like realize like, wow, it's she directed this? Yeah, I'm surprised. So, so um, y- you've seen Nomadland, so mm-hmm. I guess like uh, you kind of you know what like Chloe Zhao's flavor is. Yeah. Um, but you hadn't seen Nomadland. Like you, I, I think the only Chloe Zhao movie. No, I saw Nomadland. You saw it with us? No, I didn't see it with you guys. Oh, you, you didn't see it with us what again. Well, uh, you told me, yeah, don't not don't watch it unless. Oh, you watched it, and then I wa- I watched it anyway. I told you not to watch it. No, I. Why would I not watch that movie? It's re- it's great. Yeah, but it's also super depressing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's so sad. I, I had to hide the gun. <laughs> oh, I went to go. Okay. I went to go shit in a bucket too. <laughs> I want to feel that, that is that is an iconic scene like Frances McDormand <laughs> like Academy Award winning actress shitting in a bucket <laughs> oh my god um, um, do you think she really shit in the bucket I, just for authenticity I, I don't know method act <laughs> <laughs> get Christian Bale in here <laughs> he'll shit in the bucket and eat it okay so so you, you already knew um, no but like yeah. but still it doesn't oh I didn't know she directed this though Oh really? I didn't know oh. that until halfway through, and yeah. I'm like, then I looked then, it up. Yeah, I looked oh. it up. I like had my phone there. I'm like, okay, this movie makes sense now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. she's not the only. She's not like, in my opinion, she's not some groundbreaking director who's is the only person making depressing movies like this. Yeah, this is not an uncommon thing. Yeah. However, what is uncommon do, is their method. Yeah. Into delivering it. Yeah. Is that what you're gonna say? No, what or? I what well no, I was what I was gonna say is like I don't think it's un I think it's uncommon for uh she, like she's really good, dude. She's really mm-hmm. good and um there aren't that many people like the list of names of like brand new directors who can like produce a movie that's so emotionally uh rich um and is so like mature and is also um like uh and it doesn't bore you like that that list is not a long list um obviously when you expand it to like all directors then yeah you could bring in the greats you could bring in uh steven spielberg like obviously yeah there are many excellent directors out there who have like a long history of putting out amazing movies but like Zack Snyder (laughs) greatest director yeah of the 21st century um but uh um obviously she's not a new director now Mm -hmm. but like she was like the new hotness and that's why Disney snatched her up for Eternals um and uh uh uh, I think that method is stupid I do too that strategy of of sna- snatching up like young up and coming like new hotness indie directors and then giving them hundreds of millions of, of dollars to do a Disney Marvel movie I don't think that's a recipe for success I think if they if Disney which they're not going to yeah. if Disney gave the directors free reign and like did their own thing and made yeah. like something creative yeah. something with that because you could tell that no they had done you're right Guardians 3 Oh, well, I was gonna say, um, I was gonna say, Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange, oh, Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi did have well, more, like, yeah, yeah. But I also think Sam Raimi has his own quirks and his, his Sam Raimi ness. Yeah, yeah. I think. Cl- Would you Chloe say he's Zhao- past his prime? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. I, it is. I don't know. I mean, well, what's, what's the last movie he did? He, is that Multiverse the last, of Madness? Is that the last movie he hasn't done? Another? Well, before that, I was it a Drag Me to Hell. Oh, no, okay. that was like 10 years before. Sam Raimi did Drag Me to Hell. Yeah, he did Drag Me to Hell. He did the obviously That makes Evil that movie makes so much more sense. <laughs> Evil Dead movies. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, no, I knew that. Yeah. Well, he produced the newest Evil Dead movie. They're already making another one. But I haven't seen the new ones. I think he's just, he's campy. A lot yeah, of yeah. Is campy, which is fine, I but I, I think like. Well, I mean, the original Evil Dead wasn't also meant to be a comedy. Yeah. It was meant to be serious. I mm-hmm. haven't seen the original. I've seen Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness is great. I love yeah. Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness is like obviously a comedy. We need more movies where a regular dude gets blasted to the past, but he also like, has a shotgun. Like the like Black we, Knight? We, like we need more of that. Yeah. Like, like Martin Lawrence, the Black Knight? 
Yeah. Martin Lawrence. What is that? What's Black Knight? It's just some, basically that. Uh, it's Army basically, of Darkness? Yeah. Like Martin Lawrence? Yep. Okay. <laughs> but no oh, shotgun. Is it a new movie? No, it's like 2000. Oh, it's an old, mm-hmm. old movie. It's when Martin Lawrence was actually like oh, a big yeah. actor. He went, he went crazy one day or something like that. He went crazy? Yeah. He apparently like just, he, he went crazy. The, I don't I, think he's doing like good medically either. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Huh. Like a Bruce Willis situation. He also got he also got banned from SNL for life. What did he do? I forgot. Is but he, he like a weirdo? Is he like a? No, he had a Shia LaBeouf moment. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so he's kind of a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit. I mean, he's doing a new movie right now. Okay. He's doing other Bad Boys. The only okay. way he stays in it's out. I think it's work. out right now. He he owes his career to Will Smith. <laughs> 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 um. Yeah. All right, what else? Um, I just wanted to get your guys' take on like the. No, I um, I think, I think it's something that if you didn't know it was her, yeah, you wouldn't know unless you looked it up. Not yeah. because uh, it's also because there's not really much to, to it really isn't. Even though No Man Was Great, yeah, and you also have a completely different side of the coin, so it's really hard to pinpoint what her look is. You know what I mean? Mm. I think me knowing that she was the director made me enjoy the movie more because I could connect it to Nomadland. Okay. Okay. Um, but that's also me seeing Nomadland before seeing this. If I yeah. saw the other way around. I did, yeah. Like I did, yeah. She's like, she's just trying to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> she wants me to be upset. Yeah. I, I make these movies because I want you to start realizing that your life is not shitty. Mm. I think it's refreshing. I think not every movie needs... A happy ending. Yeah. Needs a... Yeah, like, she gives she gives you hope throughout those movies, but it's also just kind of like the roller coaster of the movies just kind of like up a little bit and then kind of like <laughs> the same place. She's able to make realism more entertaining. Yeah. And also, like, she uh, brings um, uh, attention to a style of life that I never knew about. Or like a yep. type of person that I never knew about, or a type of community I never knew about, and um, is able to bring that to the screen in a way that I feel is uh, realistic and respectful. Yeah, um, yeah. Because I think it, I think it was like when you think rodeo movies, you think of the yeah, y'all hey freaking <laughs> yeah, get, 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 get her done, <laughs> <laughs> the get her duns, the yees and haws, yeah. the rodeos, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's more than that. It's it's not. It's got. Depth. Oh, you're yeah. Like a culture in New York City is the same as a culture in in like in a, in a ranch or rodeo area. It's just. You, is yeah. that a city slicker? Yeah, city, yeah. Cowboys and city slickers. And <laughs> that's, the that's yuppies. a movie title. Yeah, is that? Yeah, city slickers. Yeah, make that, make that New, movie. Well, no, it no, is a movie. Is, oh, city that's slickers. a real movie. Yeah, yeah, where New Yorkers go to a rodeo and actually, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> city slickers. <laughs> yeah. There's actually city slickers one and two. It just show, goes fuck? Billy Crystal, Billy Crystal, and uh, it goes to show you how easy it is to make a movie. <laughs> <laughs> you just like that's it. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, so yeah, I my idea for a movie. Yeah, for the next go. Yeah, you have the next pick. Lay two options. Us. Two options. We could do yeah. Dead Man Walking. Okay. Uh with Sean uh Penn. Okay. And Susan Sarandon. Or we could do the Fisher King. Fisher King. I haven't I don't know either of these movies. I let's do either of them. Ooh. <laughs> I'm thinking Yeah. Instead of, I want to do Fisher King because it's like it's, it's kind of fantasy comedy. Okay. With Robin Williams. And you know, I want to bring us up from, you know from dramas and do some more it's kind of dramatic but yeah. it's more comedy i want to do that okay plus it's um i was looking at like some of robin williams best you know you know acting yeah. and this is like in his top 10 so i want to see it mm. fisher's king the the fisher king the fisher king yeah okay i've never heard of this yeah no huh all right so uh the fisher king that is it see you guys next time Thank you.